Now let's see how this load balancer works. Here load balancer referred to not only the website traffic, but also includes CPU load, network load, memory capacity of each server, right? So it is not like only we are looking for the website traffic. Here we have the hardware resources like CPU. CPU is, is overloaded or network is overloaded or memory is overloaded. And for that also, for that uh, question also we'll give, we try to find out the answer to load balancer. A load balancing technique makes make sure that each system in the network has same amount of work at any instance of time. So this is very important thing, right? So what a load balancer uh, will make sure that load balancer technique will make sure that each system in the network means each server should have the same amount of work all the time, right? It means that one server could not be overloaded or one ser server could not be underloaded or underutilized. This means neither of them is excessively overloaded, neither underutilized. So that is the objective of load balancer. The load balancer distribute data depending upon how busy each server or node is. In the absence of load balancer, the client must wait while this process get processed, which might be too uh, trying and uh, demotivating for him. Like, so as I had told you the scenario that in the absence of the cloud balance uh, load balancer, how the scenario is. Various information like job waiting in a queue, CPU processing rate, job arrival time, et cetera, are exchanged between the processors during the load balancing process. So in the load balancing process, we, we need to work on all those things. Means how much jobs are waiting in the waiting list, how much uh, CPU processing rate of a server is, how much job arrival rate is. So all those things will be keep in mind. The load balancer will decide like which request will go to which particular server. Failure in the right application of load balancer can lead to serious consequences and data getting lost being once one of them. So if the data, the load balancer fails, then there will be some serious consequences. And one of the serious conse consequences is data being lost. So that thing we do not want from as a cloud uh, as a cloud service providers so we have to make sure that the data should not be lost or data should be available all that time now let's see the advantages of load balancing so with the help of load balancing we can give the high performance application we can provide the high performance application we can increase the scalability means whatever the load is we can fulfill that we ability to handle certain traffic spike if suddenly the traffic spike will be more in the in the cloud so this cloud server, the load balancer will can able to balance it among different servers business uh, uh, continuity will complete flexibility means in the business it will provide the complete flexibility that particular which server, which resources could be uh, given the uh, priority or given um, less priority to handle the traffic. So the flexibility, second, it will handle the sudden traffic uh, spikes. It will increase the scalability and it will provide the high performance applications. So these are the advantages of load balancing techniques which we use in cloud computing now let's see some of the load balancing algorithm okay so these are some of the load balancing algorithm which are popular there are lots of lots of load balancing algorithm means you can find let's say 100 200 300 up to load balancing algorithm okay but these are the load balancing algorithm, which are some popular load balancing algorithm, okay? So 
let's see all those load balancing technique one by one okay